Oh, this water. Oh, the sun in that kibbutz was much more than a lot, beautiful place. And uh, that's where he died and that's where he was uh, buried. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes we do it on purpose, all right? Sometimes we are burning, uh, we're burning, um, um, uh, what do we do? We're at the old city of Nazareth.
until the age of uh, 15, from 15 to 30, there is not that much that we know, almost zero, and from 30 to 33, all of it is uh, public life, right? Now, uh, we tend to believe that uh, most of the life of uh, Jesus, uh, on his uh, younghood, of course, he was in Nazareth, and his... Sister Freeman with us. You are where? This is Tiberius <clears throat> on the Sea of Galilee. Let's see some action. It's like being a wife. Yeah, let's see some action here. <laughs> I mean, you know, well, let's don't just stand. Yeah, Can't we walk or something? Just stand. Yeah. Beautiful. Come on. Da, da. There and you go. <laughs> that ought to be enough. I thought more 
mostly about uh, uh, Jerusalem. And of course, if you want to know about every single Jewish holiday, also you can. The man? Uh-huh. It's all over the desert. <coughs> Here we have the ruins of the uh, Park of Jews, that is a reality that later on I know the tour. Uh, the Byzantine church, all right, remember, I told you, the Byzantines are the first one of building up the Christian church. Yeah. Not necessarily because they were... Uh, okay, the word synagogue. It's a great so the moment that you were born, all right? But I said before, yeah. it's, uh, the, the mistake was that uh, he got confused with the Herod, all right? So he confused with the Herod, if you read a, a book of history, you would be... You see where the uh, sheep are coming up? Follow, follow the boss. And I'll meet you outside. I'm right there. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. 
Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for they... We notice a key word. The key word is blessed. Mm -hmm. yeah. It starts out, mm -hmm. blessed are the poor. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a blessing in being poor. We'll come back to this in just a moment. Blessing was initiated by our Lord himself time of creation in the Genesis chapter number 5 the Bible gives us this statement this is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him male and female created he them and blessed them blessing was initiated by God and it was always God's purpose that a blessing would be upon people. Even his creation, the Adam, the Eve, he initiated the first act of blessing. In the book of Numbers in chapter 6, the Lord decided to incorporate within the area of the law pertaining to the priesthood this act of blessing. The Bible said, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. The reason the priest was to give this blessing was he was standing in the place of the invisible God. For the next verse says, And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel by this act, and I will bless them. So God is saying the priesthood stands where I would love to stand, but I am spirit. John 4.24 tells us that. I'd love to be there blessing because in my creation I initiated the blessing. I incorporated the blessing within the family structure that a dad would bless his son before he would pass away. It was incorporated within the priesthood law that the priest would bless. And God was simply saying, when you bless them, you're doing it in my stead. I would love to do it, but I'm spirit. But the beautiful thing about this great revelation we have is Zacharias went in to minister to do as a priest would do and there of course he began to understand uh, in a greater dimension what dimension what the blessing of God consisted of because in the book of Luke it talked about the people they were waiting for him to come out they tarried they waited a long time he had not appeared yet to them to give them the priestly blessing because he was inside, of course, encountering himself into another situation uh, that God was dealing with him uh, with. And so now, when Zacharias comes out, he cannot give the blessing. But in 24 chapters later, the great high priest Jesus Christ took them out to Bethany, lifted up his hands, and he did what? He blessed them, something Zacharias couldn't do because he couldn't speak when he came out. Jesus Christ is a high priest, bless them. What I'm saying at this point is, it has always been God's will to put a blessing upon his people. In the Revelation, when you, when you begin to read it, the blessing is given, blessed is the one that does what? That reads, hears, and keeps the sayings of the book. There's a blessing. The beautiful thing about Matthew chapter 5 in the Beatitudes is, we no longer have to wait for God to come by and decide to give us a blessing. Nor do we have to wait for an earthly father to bless his son. We can initiate the blessing. Because here he's talking about blessed. Or there is a blessing if you become poor in your spirit. 
because the only way you can receive the Holy Spirit to have His Spirit and to be of His kingdom is to recognize I have to become poor. I have to become spiritually yes. poverty Amen. stricken in my spirit Amen. in order to receive His Spirit. Yes. But that's something that I can control to an extent. The blessing is upon me if I will allow myself to become poor or poverty in my own spirit, then I can be rich by having His Spirit. And notice, blessed, blessed are they that mourn. In other words, there is a blessing to those that would mourn. You'll be comforted. There's a blessing to those that are meek, for they shall inherit the earth. There's a blessing to those which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. But you initiate that now. It is not so much coming to him and saying, and we still do this in our Pentecostalism, you know, now bless me, Lord, oh, bless us in this service tonight. There's some things we can initiate and begin to do. All I have to do is start to hunger and Amen. thirst Amen. after righteousness, Amen. and the blessing starts coming my way. Amen. And if I want the blessing, what I have to have is the right attitude, be in the position that God wants me to be in, to have the right attitude towards the blessing and to initiate those blessings to come my way. Do you want mercy? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. You want mercy? You have the right then. Go ahead and get it. How do you get it? Blessed. Blessed. You are blessed if you show mercy. Because the blessing is, mercy is going to come to you. Blessed are the pure in heart. You want to see God? You have a right to do that. You control that. You want to see God? then blessed are the pure in heart. Or the pure in heart shall be blessed, <coughs> is what it's saying. Blessed are the peacemakers, not the peacekeepers. We do a lot of that, trying to keep peace in the family, trying to keep peace in the church. But here it says there's a blessing that will come to an individual who becomes a peacemaker. Because somebody's going to say that is a child of God, and you'll be called the children of God, or individually, you're a child of God. But you control that now. You can get up in the morning and say, I, I'd like to get some blessings today. So I'll just go over here and just see what kind of attitudes I can get out of here. We refer to these as the Beatitudes. Blessed are they which are what? Persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my say rejoice rejoice amen and if that isn't enough be exceeding glad well we know what that word say it with me exceeding glad exceeding. so the blessings you can reach a point where you can rejoice but you can also reach a point of being exceeding glad now unto him who is able to do what exceeding abundantly above what we even ask or think. I mean, if the sign says go 50 miles and you do 60, then you are exceeding the speed limit. If you go 80, you're exceeding it abundantly. We understand those terminology. Here it's simply saying, let the blessing come. And as you begin to operate and let the blessings come into your life, then begin to rejoice and be exceeding glad. Just, just put it, you know, right down, as we say, the metal to the floor. Huh? And just get all you can get. Let the blessings come. Because you control how much blessing you want Amen. for each day of your life. Hallelujah. Everybody Amen. say blessing. Blessing. He blesses us. But we can also in turn bless the Lord. Amen. Oh my soul. And all that is within me. Blessing is a two-way street. Hallelujah. Let's rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah.
like this, the threefold chord of blessing. Uh, the first chord is bless the Lord. Bless Jesus. Uh, Pentecostal don't use the Jew much. Bless is enough. Blessing the Lord. And then the second chord is blessing others. And uh, we have found this a way to solve problems. I mean, I have watched my husband, someone screaming at him, and he stands there and si silently blesses the man, and it chokes him. He doesn't know what's happened. He, he had no idea, but Brother Freeman was blessing him. I knew what he was doing. We have seen this blessing, and, and you know the old folks said, in the, uh, the old patriarchs said, bless their children. We should have never stopped. That custom should have continued. Uh, and when it came home to me uh, that this is something we have failed to do that we should do, Mine's all grown in marriage. Well, I, all the best I could do at that moment was get on the telephone and give them a blessing. <laughs> and we have found in our family relationships, it has been such a tremendous, tremendous thing to bless them. But then there's a third little thing here, and that's very important. Uh, no, uh, number one, you bless Jesus. Starts with J. Uh, number two, you bless others. That begins with O. Number three, you should bless yourself. Now, we, we suffer, especially in the Western world, from a, a giant a spirit of uh, inferiority. Everyone feels inferior to someone else. And we need more blessings that we're getting, and I appreciate every word my brother said. That was wonderful. But uh, when, when God began to deal with me about this, and on what grounds do I bless myself? Mm -hmm. I am the temple of God. Yeah. I bless this yeah. temple yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, it works on everything to making your hair grow uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, many other things. Uh, but uh, you uh, see Jesus, J, others, uh, O, uh, yourself, Y. Spells joy. Mm -hmm. and, and Brother Freeman and I have been so tremendously blessed. And it has helped us to handle almost impossible situations with a threefold cord of blessings. Uh, some of the most tremendous things that I have ever seen happened when I learned to bless. And then I found in the Old Testament, I think it's in Isaiah 65, there's a verse there that says, and, and the nations shall bless themselves in God. Well, part of what Brother said was true. That's the way you do. You uh, fulfill what God wants us to be. But I want you to know there is a, a threefold cord cannot easily be broken. <laughs> no. <laughs> and if you bless the Lord and bless others and bless yourself, it will bring you joy and uh, something that cannot easily be broken. Yeah. Glory. Oh, everybody's preaching a bit now, couldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Jesus. Amen. Cameras get stopped. Uh, we're standing. Help. Word of praise. <laughs>
believe it's giving things. Grandma tried to be sorry and then she just threw her away. Actually, they change it, okay? We are going to go around, come into a palace, which is from the 6th century BC, walk around, and stand over here on the observatory where we are going to see the entire area and to understand a little bit more why the prophecy, why the valley, and everything else. Uh, Megiddo was found many, many years ago. Uh, Megiddo does appear in the Bible, all right? And uh, of course, uh, uh, definitely in the um, in the Gospels as well, in the New Testament, and uh, it's an incredible place. It's an incredible place that has in between 24 to 26 a piece here, which is from Abraham's time. Now we are talking about 73, uh, 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 3,700 years ago, where the Canaanites used to sacrifice uh, uh, their kids on the on the altar. All right. The places that I'm going to show you for in the top of the mountain. 
One of them is a silo, which is located. Tell you about the person physical field of science. Go and fill it. Go and see how it used to be. Okay, so it relates much, much better, of course. And it's the greatest uh, way that I've known because uh, people learn it much faster, of course, because they, they can feel it. You see what we are talking about. It's not theory. Okay. <laughs> Circus used to be is where the gladiators, lions, etc., etc. And the theater was for mainly acting. Now, if we try to find out why the theaters were built up, I mean, uh, what was the purpose? So, first of all, the purpose was that CNN in those days did not exist, <laughs> and the only way that you can bring the news. And uh, one brother-in-law drowned in the in Jericho, the other brother-in-law uh, fall down to the horse. The third brother-in-law hasn't been found out to this very day. I mean, all kind of accidents that they were not accidents. They were crimes. 
committed by Herod the Great in order to become a king at the end of the line. <coughs> well, the sister of Gustav was really fed up of his time. Oh. Would you like to go join him? Do you need yeah. a partner up there? Chapter 10. Don't you need a partner up there? No, I can do it just solo. <laughs> well, let's just do it. Come on. This is the Italian band. Amazing grace. <laughs> now we're to the right and uh because each one of them will live in their own place. We'll host him with all of their heart, but after two days in the morning, you better get out of there, because otherwise it's bad news, right? Then you are... I want you to say that that's sea level. All right? It's sea level. So my... Yeah, I'm 
that. It's more weight here. The other cable is above us. Come in. And let me explain this roof. <laughs> Are you all in? Yeah. No. was called the Frigidarium. Cool. Get cold is right. By the way, the name refrigerator comes from okay, Frigidarium. But why do you think that right room will be cooler than any other room? What makes it to be called Frigidarium? Very good. Very good. That's the main thing. <coughs> Higher you have the windows, goes yeah. up. Yeah. All right? Now, that's the main thing. All right, so the dream of a place for every single guy to be in the summer here with the group would be on the frigidarium. Believe me, there is a change in temperature in between that room and any other one. Now, people from there used to walk through the very small room, which is called the tipidarium, and then people used to get into this one. If you look at this one, you will see the floor. Okay, 
And then when people used to come from the other room, splash, putting water on the floor, this began to be sauna. All right? Steam room. Yeah. From uh, a cable car that we have by the ramp. Oh. There was a lot of the, God will save me. I mean, the, you, you remember that Jews in those days when we were waiting for the Messiah, at the time when Jesus came, okay, was a kind of a convenient Messiah, all right? He will save us from paying taxes from the Romans. He will get rid of the Greeks. I mean, it was not a kind of a faith type of thing, but a convenience. Here we are at the Dead Sea. Back like if you went to the market. Huh? <laughs> 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 okay. 
Uh, the word uh, kumaran means something that kumar, which is what happened when, you remember that I explained to you that this silly and African fold took over this place, alright, this way? So this is kumar in Hebrew. Alright, and how you will say that in English? When you pick up a piece of paper and you just fold oh, 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 oh. No, which uh, in a way today we have a very similar way. They're saying that this is the land of milk and honey. And then since then that became the symbol of tourism. And that's what you see above the lighting. We have the two guys of the past. If in Caesarea, in Megiddo, in Hatsor, in Tiberias, we were on the way of the sea, this is the way of the kings. All right? There were two ways apart from the way of the prophets. This is the way of the kings. Shalom. I don't know why you're so afraid. This is my Valentine's Day bouquet. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I give you credit. No money. I give you only credit. I give credit. Credit to the one out at a certain place and that certain place happens to be the star the 14 point star that is down here that uh, relates to the gospel of Matthew. you remember 14 generations in between Abraham mm -hmm. to the Otherwise, you will die from the smell down, down below. 
So the tables used to be usually divided if we had the time to go. Jesus, Ten different churches, by the way, eight, I believe. But each one of them shows you this is the Shepherd Field. Believe me that I'm showing to you the Shepherd Field. I mean, this is where the, uh, um, they were with a flock of uh, sheep. sitting there by the
national time by approximately 50 days. They were all with one accord in one place. Now, don't get hung up on traditionalism. The main thing is they were here in the city of Jerusalem in a room in one accord in one place. I'm not going to fuss about whether this is the place or not. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a, as of a rush, mighty wind. Now here's what happened. The Bible says then that it filled, number one, it filled all the house where they were also a number one. The number one building in the number one city. Which means there's going to be a number two in, of each of those. The house first was filled with the sound of that mighty rushing wind that filled all the house where they were sitting. We're standing. They were sitting. They're just giving you the setting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, split tongues, like as fire. And what happened to split tongues, like as a fire, sat upon each of them that were sitting. They were sitting, but the split tongues, like as a fire, sat down on them. Don't forget now, the room has also been filled with the sound. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. We believe we are apostolic oneness. We are not Trinitarian. We believe here over in Israel the Lord our God.
you go ahead and, and receive it if you need it. Keep looking to your left. This is what's crucified. On the right. And I tried to train my wife to go along to the market. This. Church of the Ascension. We're on the Mount of Olives. Tradition has it that there's a footprint inside this little church of the Ascension that Jesus left when he left the Mount of Olives. Of course, the uh, third built up by Herod the Great. Now you can look at the entire size of the temple because you can see also the pinnacle. Can you see the pinnacle? Are stones from the time of Herod the Great which means that I could go and pray there. Yeah, this is a uh, highway number Yeah, yeah. 
Lord of the Lord. Therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Friday afternoon. And then we'll wait till Sunday, right? But it's exactly the same um, ritual as was done in Jesus' time. I mean, washing the body and covering with a shroud that now you know what the shroud Last Supper, he comes over here. From here, he goes to Caiaphas' house. From Caiaphas' house, just behind the wall, just behind the walls, there is the Praetorium. So, Two thousand years old. We're missing about four hundred years. Yeah. But you know that the only tree is like eternal. Okay, older we get, better fruit trees. Yeah. The only tree.
Little Creek. Zechariah James. And then, of course, up there are the tombs of Haggai and Malachi. I mean, this is it. You know, when yesterday I told you that we were on the traditional tomb of King David, you have to realize that Koanim, all right, the Koanim has a very special road built up just for them to drive all the way around uh, is in order not to bypass the, uh, the cemetery.
Cada grupo es un grupo independiente, uno del otro.